This week in the Rochester Press Box in Salvador's Pizzeria at the historic Garage Door Restaurant. I'm Craig Rubzinski of the Rochester Nighthawks and find out why their third straight championship is very historic in Rochester history. And I'm John Dettulia. We'll look back at the sports summer of 1994. And I'm Mike Catalan. I'll tell you why 24 years old is old enough to wake up and grow up. And I'm Bill Pucko with Harriet Thompson, a 91-year-old inspiration. Join us this weekend at the Rochester Press Box. The Rochester Press Box is brought to you by Salvatore's at the Garage Door. Rochester's choice winner for best pizzeria, featuring Wacky Wing Wednesday and the Super Slice. It's as big as your head. The games are always on at the Garage Door, home to the Rochester Press Box. Hello everyone and welcome to the Rochester Press Box here from Salvador's Pizzeria at the historic Garage Door Restaurant in Aranaquite at East Ridge Road. I'm Bill Paco, joined by John DeTulio. Billy, good to be with you, buddy. Mike Catalana. He's got a streak going now, doesn't he? Yeah. What, he's been here two weeks in a row? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And Craig Brzezinski, pleasure to uh, join us, Director of Communications of the three-time world champion Rochester Night yeah, Nice thanks. work. Yes, thanks uh, for having me. Overall impressions of uh, Championship Night on Saturday, the crowd, the atmosphere, the win. Why do you it, come away from that? It was great. It's got to be one of the most exciting times I've ever been a part of. Um, a three-peat had never happened before in our organization's history, in our league's history, in Rochester sports history. So it was electric. It's the loudest I've ever heard that building. What do you think of the crowd? I thought they were great. They were chanting throughout. Um, you know, they had their cowbells, they had their banners, their signs. Um, they were really into it from the opening face-off. And then that mini game is just 10 minutes of you know, pure adrenaline, so they were on their feet for the whole 10 minutes. You know, guys, to explain the mini game is like it's, it's sort of a semi best of three. Calgary wins a game, you win a game, that happens, you play a 10 minute mini game. Kind of contrived, isn't it? I don't know, I love it. I contrived, contrived, I don't care. <laughs> I thought it was great, and I hope the NL continues to do something like this. Because I was at the Buffalo game mm -hmm. where they needed to win, and then that 10 minute extra session, then they go to overtime. And if you're a fan of lacrosse, if you're a fan of the Nighthawks, to me, I don't think you can beat it. I think it's great, rather than going to a best of three, which would be more expensive, extra ticket for the fan. Here, I think you get two games for the price of one. That's fantastic. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm with them. I, I think that's fine. I think everybody knows it up front. I'm glad it's not any sort of uh, total goals type of thing, because then that, yeah. that really takes away from it. And there are limitations for leagues and money. And sometimes you say that, you're traveling back and forth. Um, either one game or this, and this ends up being almost like overtime in a one-game playoff. So I'm, I, I think it was great. What got me in, and must, you must have had the discussions with the players, is how you reload after the full game, and then what do they give you, a two-minute break, two and then they send break. you right back out there? Yeah, you're right back out <laughs> like you're playing another quarter, except obviously at the end of that quarter you get to raise the trophy or your heart gets broken And we saw it go both ways. I mean, Buffalo had the early advantage, Calgary had the early advantage, Rochester then took over one. Two dramatic games, but I can't imagine preparing for that. Yeah, you know what? When I talked to the players, they said, we can only prepare for game two. If we win, then we're going to have to quickly get focused for that mini game. What's the ceiling of lacrosse in this town or in this country, do you think? Guys? Lacrosse itself yeah. is a game that is growing immensely. The issue that Craig has, and I think the Nighthawks have, is they have probably the most intense, loyal fan base, I, I think, of any team in Rochester. I think the Rhinos used to have a lot of that. I don't think they have it as much. But that intensity for that group is incredible. And they were all there on Saturday night. Now, growing it outside of that group, I think, is a difficult yeah. thing based on the way the league is. You know, there are times you guys are gone from home for almost a month, right, yeah. during the season. And it does become a little out of sight, out of mind. And I think that's the difficult thing, to have it grow beyond your hardcore indoor lacrosse fan. I'm fearful Kurt could just take this team and go. He could probably make a lot more money going somewhere else, playing in a bigger building, right? Probably get a better lease. So I think Kurt and Lewis deserve a lot of credit for keeping this team here when, in fact, Buffalo, you look at uh, Calgary, Edmonton, all playing in these giant arenas, packing them, probably have a better lease deal because they're owned by the NHL team. 
And I think Kurt, to his credit, could make a lot yeah. more money if he picked up and left and took the Nighthawks to, say, Hamilton or some other joint. In that regard, I think we're, we're, we're certainly fortunate to have a team that's the best yeah. in the league. You know, the, the sport itself, though, is a puzzle to me because if we look at it and try to look at it objectively, and we didn't grow up on lacrosse, I can't think of a better game. It has everything. So why isn't it the most popular game in the United States? It's trying to get those fans into the arena, and we found that once we get them in there, they're pretty much hooked. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got everything. It's got the pick and rolls of basketball, the physical contact of football. It's got high-scoring games like hockey used to be in the 70s and 80s. So it's got all of those great sports wrapped into one. It's just trying to get people exposed to the sport. All right, congrats to the Rochester Nighthawks. We'll look at the Stanley Cup and the NBA Finals when we return. Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box here, Salvatore's Pizzeria at the Historic Garage Door Restaurant. The Rochester Lancers of the Major Arena Soccer League holding summer camps throughout and all over the county. Uh, you should check those out. We also don't want to let another day go by without honoring National Donut Day. Donuts Delight is on Culver. They have a cannoli donut that is ridiculous. That's their famous donut. That is the number one donut at Donuts Delight, the trust me, one. both polls. John, Stanley Cup and NBA Finals, uh, they're great matchups. The sports are really going to take off for this, aren't they? Yeah, you got East Coast, West Coast. I'm anxious to see the ratings for L.A. and New York. I think you have, you've got Jonathan Quick, who's established as a winning, as a uh, championship winning goalie, but you do, in fact, have the best goalie in hockey, I believe, in Henrik Lundqvist. So I think it's an interesting dynamic. There's a couple of relates. Play, but the play-by-play -play for the uh, Kings is Nick Nixon, a local guy, mm -hmm. Jordan Nolan, Ted Nolan's kids with the LA Kings, and here come the Rangers where a year ago they fire John Tortorella. At the deadline they trade Ryan Callahan. Over the years they've made some moves. Glenn Sather knows a thing or two about winning championships, but here are the Rangers now with a chance, as Team of Destiny, whatever you want to call them, with a chance to win their first cup in 20 years. I think it's going to be an exciting finals NBA and Stanley Cup, I would be shocked if both of them didn't go to at least six games. Yeah. Sticking with the hockey, it's been computed, Mike, that uh, a Ranger fan going to see the Stanley Cup game, it would cost them more to see it in Madison Square Garden yeah. than it would be to fly out to L.A. and take care of a hotel yeah. and everything else to see it there. Yeah, because the reality is in L.A., they are hardcore Kings fans. The television ratings in L.A. were atrocious much better in the other cities because the Kings are still that team in LA no matter how good they've been whereas in New York I mean anything that's big is really big in New York and the ratings will be excellent there I think nationally it's going to struggle and this is something I always try to point out to people in Rochester who don't like the NBA or will say silly things to me like nobody cares about the NBA the NBA ratings will crush the NHL mm -hmm. ratings it just is nationally you know, it's LeBron James and everything it is. And I, and I like the matchup for the NHL. I think it's going to be fun. That, that last series in the West was as good as it gets, Chicago and L.A., but nationally it'll be perceived a little differently. In the NBA series, what more do you want out of that? Yeah. I mean, Tim Duncan against LeBron James, Tony Parker and company, I think that's going to be. And not just because it's on ABC, because the games are on too late, <laughs> 9 o'clock on Channel 13. I understand that. It's too late for us. You'll I be working, the news will be, be working late. late. Well, it's yeah. nice the NHL started at 8. Yeah. They're starting it. They're getting it. All right, let's start our game a little bit earlier. And those games all ended around midnight, about the same time as the <laughs> normal Yankees game. <laughs> so right. who's, the, uh, who's the lacrosse guy? watch. Do you watch hockey or basketball? Uh, I watch hockey. Yeah, I was watching, keeping very close tabs on that Chicago LA series because Pat Kane is from my hometown, South Buffalo, so he actually lives around the street from my parents. Nice. So uh, I was hoping that Chicago would win, but um, I'm putting my faith in the New York Rangers going for the New York team. All right, just uh, quickly, back to the NBA. Yeah. Uh, which is the better story, the, the outcome for San Antonio? Or Miami? Well, I mean, I think it's San Antonio, it's more of, it, it's such a long-term thing that they've had, and Duncan has been good for so long. I think people would recognize the amazing career he's had more. But for LeBron to win three in a row, and then who knows what happens with this team going forward, I think in a historical perspective, it's a bigger thing if the Heat win. But in another way, it's also a big thing if they lose, because this might be the last time they do it. Who knows what's yeah. going to happen going forward. So uh, I think either way, it's a great story, but I still think it's bigger if the Heat win. Quickly, John, pick them for us. I would say I'm going with the best player in the world, LeBron in seven, and I'll pick the Kings in seven. All right. Like it or not, when we return.
Back here at the Rochester Press Box, Salvatore's Pizzeria, Garage Door Restaurant. Like it or not, John, Yasiel Puig has been in I Major League him. Baseball for a year. Love him. He saved Don Mattingly's job, got the Dodgers into the playoffs. Uh, he is one of the most exciting players the Dodgers have had in a long time. And he's one of the most exciting and controversial players. I think he's great for the Dodgers. Uh -huh. He's great for the game. He's great for the crusty baseball fans who hates the way that he showboats and doesn't know the infield fly rope. I think he's fantastic. And you're just going to watch this kid mature and I would hope only get better and better. The kid is a freak. He runs like Bo Jackson and throws like Roberto Clemente and hits like maybe Manny Ramirez. Yeah. I mean, the guy five tool player he may add a six tool if it's possible i think he has i think the ceiling is that high on this kid if he can stay on that straight path there won't be any trouble getting him the all-star game this year will no i think he'll be there <laughs> i got to see him play against the phillies when i was down there yeah. last week he got three hits in the game only one of them got through the infield he was so fast down to first base you know those guys when when you're watching in your mind you see the ball hit and you think it's an out it's just you mm -hmm. know just the way you're looking and he was down the line, gliding down the line, and he beat it out for a base hit. He didn't do anything spectacular in the game other than be Pui. They didn't need to do much to beat the Phillies. How close is he to the best player in baseball right now? He's real close. You start talking about the best players. I mean, people will say Trout, and Harper's hurt. But, I mean, Puig is in a discussion. And well, you could talk about some of the other players having banner years, but I think you start, I think, I think Puig's in the conversation. Let's put it that way. Like, it or, not, like it or not, Michael, uh, Brandon Workman gets suspended. Well, that whole thing was kind of nutty. And don't you think, the back and forth and yelling and screaming, the now new great arbiter of all baseball, David Ortiz, explaining who should <laughs> be suspended and not suspended. You can't even get near David Ortiz. Now he hates David Price because the rules are different for him. Do I like it? No, I don't like only one guy being suspended. I, but I'll tell you what, honestly, if I ran baseball, the minute a guy left the dugout or left the bullpen, it's an automatic five-game suspension. You would end all of that. You I don't work want in the that NBA, anymore. Didn't it? Exactly. Do not leave that. Yeah, you're going to have a little bit with the pitcher and the catcher. You can't let a pitcher go unimpugned. He can do whatever he wants, and no one can get near him. I don't mind the, the hitter and them going back and forth. I don't mind the manager coming out and screaming. But these chuckleheads coming out of the dugout to yell at and each the other. Bullpen. I, All the, the way bullpen. In. I mean, seriously, yeah. stop it. Just stop it, I stop it, stop it right it. now. I think, you think they like it. They, like, they love the fact when managers come out and point. Now they're upset they don't do it as much because of instant replay. They love, I think baseball deep down loves the, the old school baseball people love the fact yeah. that players are coming out and they may there be a chance they get brawl. Really Let do. the manager come out and yell and scream. Yeah. We've all seen that. Just stay in the dugout. Greg, I'll flip it back to lacrosse. This is all a result of unwritten rules in baseball. Mm -hmm. We talk about them a lot. Is the culture of lacrosse got any unwritten rules? Are there things that are happening there that maybe we don't see? Well, I mean, obviously, like hockey, you're not supposed to take liberties on the goalie. We saw that in, the, uh, in Calgary when mm -hmm. Matt Vince got hit twice. So, you know, Stay away from the goalie. You know, the fighting part of it, you know, when a player is down in a vulnerable position, you can't, you know, throw another punch. But pretty much after that, not really. I mean, there's, there may be some little idiosyncrasies I don't know about, but those are the two that come to mind. It's unwritten because there are very few written rules in the Brazil. Or they're, they're, they're called. <laughs> uh, Craig, like it or not, World Cup soccer, which is coming up. I love this time of year. I love USA soccer. Jurgen Klinsmann now is the, the head man behind the bench. They're in the so-called group of death with Germany, <laughs> Portugal, and Ghana. Um, why are we always the group of death? It seems like every time I, this comes up, they put United because States Because the U.S. The team's going to die. That's why <laughs> everybody knows, right? Yeah, I think they'll get out of there. I think they'll get out. I think it'll be Germany and the United States. Really? Portugal's got Ronaldo's hurt. So uh, he's got a little bit of a calf strain. So I think the U.S. is going to get out of that pool. I may be 100% wrong, but I always bleed USA when it comes to World Cup time. Ghana, do you want it? Ghana, do you want it? I guess the one thing about the World Cup, you can have five people in your, well, 12 people in your country, be a third, be an eight world, be a seventh world country. You know what I mean? Economically distraught, but yet be good in soccer. I think that's one you got to appreciate. It doesn't matter economics, yeah. doesn't matter how many people in your country. I mean, Ghana could beat the United States. That may be the only thing they could ever beat us in. I got, I'm in a keeper league for the World Cup. I've got two guys from Ghana, so I'm really hoping <laughs> <laughs> that they stay on. Watch out for Cameroon. Yeah, they're tough. Unfinished business when we return.
Welcome back to the Rochester Press Box here, Salvatore's Pizzeria at the Historic Garage Door Restaurant. Wacky Wings Wednesday, live music on Friday. John DiTullio trivia starting up during the football season football on Thursday. Season. This is top-notch trivia. I think it's ranked number one in the country. We just uh, the, the polls just came in, and we're near the top with our I'll sports to, trivia. Check that out. Unfinished business, Johnny. Yeah, you know, we're just talking about the Rangers back in the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time since 1994. For some of you who don't remember that summer, it was an epic summer, epic sports summer. Starting with the Rangers, an improbable run. The prediction by Mark Messier, they're going to beat the Devils. They did. They went on and they beat Vancouver, their first cup since 1940. The Knicks at the same time were playing the Houston Rockets for the NBA Finals. In the previous series, Reggie Miller scored 25 points in the fourth quarter, had this feud going with Spike Lee, and the rivalry was born between New York and the Pacers. And, of course, if you watch the Knicks uh, Rocket series, you had the Bronco chase with O.J. Simpson, where everyone, life stood still for those hours watching this Bronco chase. For me, I had to run out into my car because I could care less about O.J. Simpson. I wanted to hear the Knicks and Rockets as I listened to the second half until my buddy ran out and says they, he has finally surrendered. And then, of course, if you were a Yankees fan, finally Don Mattingly was going to get to the postseason. He was having a great year. The Yankees had the best record in the American League, and then all of a sudden, come August, the strike hit. Later, World Series canceled. You had the ups and downs of summer of 94, but if you look back, you had every storyline you could want. Yeah. NBA, Stanley Cup, O.J. Simpson, and the World Series being canceled. Hopefully we'll never see that again. All right, a history lesson you have one yeah. for us too, Craig. I do, with the Rochester Nighthawks. I mean, obviously near and dear to my heart. 20th season, very historic uh, campaign for the Rochester Nighthawks. and. You know, hats off to Kurt Styers. You know, here's a guy that came in in 2008, took over the team from Steve Donner, kind of resurrected the uh, the franchise, got us back on the map. You know, and all he's done is, you know, he made some trades that were a little controversial at the time. John Grant Jr. heading out to heading out west, Sean Evans going to Calgary, brings in Matt Vince, Johnny Paulus, drafts Cody Jamison, Sid Smith, first three Pete in this town's history, first one in the NLL history, and it all goes to Kurt guy that pays for uh, parents to go on the road to watch their kids play in championship games, gives them everything that they need in order to succeed on and off the field, and he's rewarded with three straight titles. I really hope that Kurt Stiers, historically, doesn't go unappreciated in this town for all the things he did. We you take back, you know, saving the Amherst and bringing the Nighthawks in, he's really an important figure here, isn't he? Absolutely, you know, and he's, he's kind of a person that shies away from the spotlight. He's very soft-spoken. He's not out there beating his own drum. He's, he just stays behind the scenes and lets the team do the work and do the talking. And it works. Like yeah. uh, this past week, Marcel Darius of the Bills got in trouble again. And this was an alleged drag race, allegedly with his teammate, Jerry Hughes. And now the Bills have told him to stay away until the mandatory mini camp. And so we're up there, like a lot of the media, interviewing the players, trying to get their reaction. Now, the difference between NFL players and a normal workplace is something happens to one of your coworkers. Very rarely is anybody coming and putting a microphone in front of you asking you what you think. Because in most cases, most people wouldn't have a public comment. But the players are put in that spot. And their public comments were all roughly the same. We are caring about our teammate, we're there for him, and we hope everything is okay. And the tone sometimes is a little bit of like, what happened to Marcel? Now that's in the public, and I get these are young guys, and I get they stick up for each other, and I get he is their brother and their friend when he's on the team. But I hope in private, the leaders of that team are sitting down with Marcel Darius and telling him to wake up and to grow up. Not only do you have a responsibility, you have an opportunity. You could be an all-pro player. You could make a fortune in this league. The mistakes you are making, I know you've had rough times in your life, are childish mistakes. You're 24 years old, time to grow up, and if he doesn't know it, maybe somebody on his team needs to tell him it's time to grow up and wake up. Stakes are higher, too, I think, with the team for sale. I mean, he impacts a lot more than just a... A new owner is going to want to see a certain amount and not going to want to put up with a lot of stuff. He's right on that edge right now. I want to give a quick shout out to Harriet Thompson who ran the San Diego Marathon in seven hours, seven minutes and 42 seconds. 
uh, which isn't all that impressive when you consider she's about four and a half hours behind the eventual winner of that race. It is impressive, however, when you consider that Harriet is battling cancer. She had open wounds on her legs that she needed to tape up and bandage in order to complete the race. It is impressive when you realize that she hadn't started doing marathons until she was 76 years old. And it is equally as impressive that this time was registered by a 91-year-old woman who now set the national record for her age group by over two hours. Pretty darn impressive. Remember Harriet, next time you or anyone you know says, I can't. The Rochester Press Box is recorded here from Salvatore's Pizzeria at the Garage Door Restaurant every Wednesday afternoon at 12.30. We invite you to come down, meet the guys, have a little lunch. John, great as always. Thank you very Billy, much. Billy, great job. Mike? Today. Good to be here. Craig, congratulations. Nice to have you oh, with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.